Hi, Cathy. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you for uh, agreeing to speak at the first online NCH conference, which is really, really exciting. A bit of a full start last year with COVID. We were looking forward to having you in person, but uh, really, really glad that you've agreed to join us um, in this new new way forward this year. It is a very exciting way of doing it, isn't it? I mean, it's just opening up so many doors. It is. And it's so lovely for us to be able to have uh, such a variety of speakers when we've kind of been limited before when we've done it physically. So, uh, yeah, it's really, really great. So thank you for agreeing to to come along and join us once again. So this interview is just a a short snippet to find out a bit about you and um, a bit about what you're going to be talking about at the conference. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, tell me about your background and uh, how you've ended up where you are with your career now. Oh, gosh. Um, well, uh, my background is very much IT and investment banking, so not hypnotherapy at all. <laughs> um, but I stopped smoking with a hypnotherapist. And um, I think so many people have this story, don't they? Mine's um, exactly the same. Yeah, really. <laughs> Isn't it great? Yeah. But- I have always had this deep desire to understand how things work. You know, yes, I am the one that takes things to pieces to find out how it works. Uh, And so, you know, it was so um, amazing that I couldn't help but want to know what was going on. So I looked into what's going on. I always thought it was going to work, which is great. Um, But before I knew it, I was training to be a hypnotherapist I'm still working at banks and I went to the amazing Quest Institute and and, uh, trained there and because I'm such a geek about learning and finding stuff out before I knew before I knew it I just I just started in practice and um, left the banks so um, and then um, cut a very long story short I've always loved supporting other professionals so Um, I specialised in working with drug use which was so prevalent in the city where I worked in banking and uh, around there so that I could take back um, what I knew back into the city and help people there so that was amazing and then because the practice was successful it became a kind of natural progression if you like for me to continue to support other therapists with their business as well as of course being a supervisor so um it's just a joy and it just kind of naturally happened it wasn't planned mm. it just kind of naturally went that way so now I help um therapists mm. and other kind of transformation professionals with their business which I mean is, is wonderful because it's one of those kind of I think a forgotten element people tend to go into training as a hypnotherapist like you say and um don't always think about what building a practice might look like where the business comes from you kind of pop out the other end with your qualification and yeah where's the clients absolutely that I mean that's so true because and why would anyone mm. know how to run a business you know mm. we're not born knowing this stuff um and so I mean a lot of my experience is through my own mistakes yeah uh, because it's kind of like oh right build it and they will come oh I'll get a website and some business cards and as if by magic clients will appear mm. <laughs> And of course, it doesn't work that way, does it? <laughs> well, no. And I mean, even that whole piece in and of itself, you say build a website, uh, that's quite a special field uh, that some people might try and do it themselves. Some people would like to employ someone to do. They don't know where to turn, who to ask. Right. Um, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a lot of elements to having a hypnotherapy practice that Certainly. isn't just about the hypnotherapy. Okay. Um, and I think it's, it's great to have a, uh, someone like yourself that, available to new and experienced therapists um especially having gone through this change I should imagine there's a lot of people that maybe had an established business that's totally changed in the last 18 months very much so the way we've all done business has changed and you know it's stepping into it as a new opportunity is is where people are succeeding I think most because I think with you know I I think one of the issues with you know finding something you totally love doing and going oh my goodness, I've got to make a business out of this, is, is we, get, we, we listen to what everybody else tells us and this whole build a website thing uh, and business cards and all this 
we think that's the way to do it. And everyone's kind of got it the wrong way around. So for me, the, 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 the real key is to be really, really clear on your message, you know, what it is coming from here that you want to, what, what is the difference you want to make in the world and how can you help people first, absolutely first. And where people are running around trying to get cards and websites and all this sort of stuff, that's missing, kind of missing the point. It comes from inside first, if you like. And then and only then can your marketing, if it includes a website or not, it doesn't have to, can your marketing then support the message and what you're here to do in the world. Um, and I think with what's gone on, it's become more polarised, if you like, for those who have understood the importance of getting really, really clear on their message have been able to pivot more easily, I think. Yeah. If that makes sense. It does. And I mean, is that the sort of thing that you're going to be touching on in um, what you're talking about at the conference? Um, partly, yeah, because... Again, one of the one of the most pivotal moments, I think, in any therapist's uh, business is when they step back, get clear on their message and then um, step away, if you like, from the session by session model. And it's a bit controversial to say that. But when people trust this and step into um, a way of packaging up their um their amazing experience and uniqueness into programs that's the that's a kind of pivotal point in their business and it makes the difference um especially if you are specializing but not necessarily um, and i know it's hard because you think well if i package up then i'm losing the flexibility to work with clients but this is the amazing thing it doesn't it just adds to it. So what I want to bring to the conference is kind of two parts. One is a way of um, designing your programs, taking what you know, taking your uniqueness and packaging it up in a way that doesn't lose your flexibility. It's a kind of three sweep approach. And once you've got that, you can. You know, most people go, ah, oh, I can do that. Um, so it kind of takes the, 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 the sort of time element out and they can, they, they can come across as the expert um, to the clients. There are all sorts of benefits in doing this. So I'll be talking about that. And the second part is about how you can actually then get your program designed to do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to your marketing, which is quite exciting. They don't have to be separate. And if you design a suite of programs that that I don't want to give too much away here. So yeah, <laughs> if you design a, a suite of programs um, in the right way, it can do it can actually do some of the marketing for you. So that's the second part of what I want to share at the conference. That sounds really interesting. Really interesting. Brilliant. Thank you. And. Um, I think there'll be a lot of people, both new and more experienced members, that will really be interested in um, in what you've got to say. Because I think it's an area that people do still wonder uh, years down the line. I know people ask, sometimes they email into the NCH or within the peer groups or within supervision. It's a question a lot, a lot of people ask. Um, yeah. And I think it's important to address the concerns around it as well because um, most of my clients are, are specialists and I, I particularly help specialists to, to uh, market their specialism. But this approach can work even if you want to be a generalist mm. because let's face it, a lot of us when we first start in hypnotherapy don't know what we are focusing on and why would we? It's only mm. as we get more experience and suddenly you start working with some people that you think, oh my goodness, I love doing this. Mm. And I'm not so keen on doing that. And um, so I don't I'm not a great believer in, you know, choosing a niche unless yeah. unless it's so obvious to you that you have to do that and nothing else. Yeah. But I, I find that often it's the other way around. It finds you because you're naturally working in flow. And that's yeah. that's really exciting. So I just want to reassure people that this approach can work when you're still in that stage. You don't have to have a niche and a really clear, you know, uh, clear message, yes, but um, 
th this approach of packaging up your programs can into programs can still work even when you're you're not necessarily specializing which is exciting yeah it's really really interesting you say that because i definitely found that something that i ended up seeing a certain sort of a client yes funnily enough um yes. Uh, and others, it just, you know, like smoking, which everyone thinks is a, you get loads of smokers. I got I had hardly any. Um, and subconsciously, it's something I've never really enjoyed dealing with, to be honest. It's not one of my favourites. Um, and, yeah, I think the universe just knew that and didn't send them my way, really. Well, absolutely. And I think that's how it goes. Once we realise where we are in flow, um, then our marketing message, if you like, will will reflect that will reflect us mm -hmm. um and you'll find that the people will be attracted to your message who you love to work with mo most mm -hmm. so when we feel we ought to have that long bullet point list of i help I with this everything. this this yeah. this this and this you know if you're not really feeling that <laughs> that's going to come across in your marketing and um, in your conversation with potential clients mm -hmm. so that whole sort of um staying very close to to your own uniqueness and where you are in flow tends to lead you very much much quicker um to the area that that um, you, you specialize in if you if you go that route yeah brilliant i suppose it's, it's it's just as valuable i would guess for you both helping clients and helping other other therapists just as rewarding oh very much so i mean um I guess I think I've told you before, I'm a bit of a geek. I, I have this total desire to understand how everything works. Um, I think a lot of therapists are the same because a lot mm. of people get into hypnotherapy because they're fascinated by the works of the brain. Um, and who knew that this would expand into a fascination of how, how marketing and business works, which mm. is totally unexpected for me but it's just another fascinating aspect of psychology but also um you know in my own therapy I now tend to work more with people who are um struggling with some of their blocks to their own businesses now mm -hmm. so that's what I focus on so the two very much work together that people who are starting up a business or been in business for a while you know what it's like we get the um you know, the I'm not good enough is popping up and the I can't charge Imposters. that. And the, yeah, all of that, all of that. So that's a, a great pleasure as well to, to help people on their journey because there are so many amazing therapists out there mm -hmm. who, who give up because yeah. they haven't been successful, who have got incredible talents, whose experience mm -hmm. in every walk of life comes together to make them unique. And then the very person that the potential clients need. Yeah. So that's a that is a passion of mine is is to help these amazing people get their amazing stuff out there and help more people. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! And um, we can't wait to hear what you've got to say at the conference and say thank you so much for for coming and joining us and and for the contribution to the NCH over the years because you've been a regular contributor to the journal. You've been a long-standing member and. Um, yeah, it's really much appreciated. It's very much my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for your time today. Thanks.